I wanna share a word of wisdom for the pioneer. So I'm talking to people that usually walk the road less traveled. They actually take the path of most resistance, not least resistance. They're on the front lines. They have to live for more. And generally, these people are willing to face fear, rejection, even failure. They understand the risk is high and they're willing to take it. But this type of person has to do it because if they don't, they will feel completely unfulfilled if they stay small and play it safe. And if any of this resonates with you, you know what I'm talking about. And their motivation is not selfish ambition and personal gain or wanting to build their own empire. Their motivation is Jesus. He is actually the motivating factor behind why they're willing to risk it and why they can't play safe because they see the potential on the other side. That if the risk succeeds, or if the leap of faith becomes what they're hoping for, or more, the possibility, the potential that is there for reward, for the sake of Christ, the impact that can be made for the glory of God is worth it all. It's the reason why they must live in such a way. And therefore, you're willing to take that step make that move, take that leap of faith to act upon what God is saying and what God is showing you. And so if anything in what I'm describing resonates with you, then I'm talking to you. You're someone who's made to take territory and take ground and do what most people won't do. You're not living for the American dream. And if you're not from America and you're watching this video, then what I mean is that you're not living for what the average person is living for. The thing that you burn for is risking it. And not just for the sake of risking it, but because you have an actual word or vision or, or a goal in your heart that you want to accomplish so that people can come into the kingdom and the will of God can be done on earth and Jesus can be greatly glorified. And so here's the word of wisdom that I wanna share with you. It's so simple, but it's so vital. And that is keep your heart pure. What I mean is this, people that live this way have the opportunity to experience more challenges, more resistance, more opposition. There's a lot more opportunities to be misunderstood, hurt, and offended. Therefore, we have to be extra diligent to keep our hearts pure and free from offense, bitterness, hatred, anger, and these types of things, because we'll have a lot more opportunities to partake of those things or to experience those things. Bible is really clear that it's the pure in heart that will see God. I believe there's a few different ways of interpreting what it means to be pure in heart, but what I'm talking about here is absolutely one of those. Our heart cannot be contaminated, polluted, or poisoned by these things. These things are like poison. The reality is whatever happens in our heart is going to affect everything in our life. Our motivation, our perception, our ambition, the way that we view people, the way that we view God, the way that we view ourselves, it all originates in the heart. There's so many scriptures, right, that I could share to prove that, but I believe most of you understand that. But here's my point, is that when you live a life this way, you have the potential for two things that exceed the average person. You have the potential for greater loss, greater hurt, and the potential for greater rewards and victories and successes an impact. And if you're this person, it is worth that risk. Absolutely. Because Jesus is worth that risk. 100%. But what I'm saying is therefore we need to use wisdom because we understand that reality for someone who lives a life as a pioneer. Then we understand the need that is even far greater for us in protecting and guarding our heart and keeping it pure. And so here's what I believe the Lord is showing us um, to do that. One way that we can do that, that's absolutely vital. And that is that we have to remain rooted in the love of God. And that only comes through intimacy. There is no possible way to remain free from the different types of things that can come our way that I've already mentioned, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, hurt, if we are not abiding in God's love through intimacy. Remember, 
He is the vine, we are the branch. And if we are not abiding apart from him, we can do nothing. And so the potential of, of damage here is that if we don't remain in God's love and our hearts don't remain pure, one of two things can potentially happen. Whatever we're doing can crash and burn and fail or, and what we're doing can become something that started in the spirit, but then we finish it in the flesh because we are not seeing and hearing God rightly because our heart is polluted by anger, bitterness, jealousy, and those types of things. Okay, so we could start something in the spirit, but then go into the flesh. And so it's of the utmost importance that our hearts remain pure, okay? And here's what the Lord showed me. On June 2nd of this year, I actually had, um, it wasn't a dream because it wasn't visual, but while I was sleeping, the Lord said something to me and I recorded it. I have it written down and dated. He said, this is what I heard in a state of sleeping. I didn't see anything, but I heard the voice of God. He said, your inner life is like a plumbing system. And as I began to process that word with the Lord, honestly, over the next like couple weeks, because I was like, what are you trying to say, Lord? What are you trying to say? And he began to show me that your inner life is like a plumbing system in that if things get clogged up, and your inner life is talking about like the things of the soul, the things of the spirit, right? Your mind, your will, those types of things, your emotions. Now, if things get clogged up in a plumbing system, what happens? Damage, right? Problems, right? So for a plumbing system to work efficiently, things have to flow in and things have to flow out, correct? So what he showed me is that through intimacy with the Lord, a lot of times we're very aware of the reality that reading the word, prayer and worship and all of those things, you know, is a deposit into our life. Yes, we are receiving the word, his presence, his love. There are things that are going in. But what the Lord showed me is that intimacy also is the means by which the things that need to come out, come out, just like in a plumbing system. Waste and dirty water needs to be removed. If it backs up, there's going to become a problem, right? Things are gonna are not gonna be well. So he was showing me that in intimacy, it's not only about what we receive from the Lord, but it's also about what happens in the presence where he removes the things from us that contaminate our heart. He removes the lies, he removes the hurt, he exposes things and he removes things. And we need that element to keep our heart pure. So in Ephesians 5, 26, it says that Jesus sanctifies his church, the bride, right? He sanctifies his church and he cleanses her by the washing with water through the word. It also says in Hebrews 4, 12, that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So it's the word of God is not just about putting truth into us or wisdom into us or the knowledge of God into us, even though that is a part of what the word does. It's also about what it does to us and how it shines the light on the things that are going on. Look at that, the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so a lot of times we're not even that aware all the time of all the things that are going on. There can be lies that we're believing, things that we have come into agreement with, that we are letting settle in our hearts that shouldn't be there. And it's actually through intimacy and, the, and, and relationship with the spirit and the word of God that we're actually able to get those things exposed and removed. So once again, we must keep our hearts pure. We have to stay in a place of forgiveness and mercy and love. And the Lord was saying, keep your expectations in God, not people. It doesn't mean we don't ever expect anything from people, but ultimately, ultimately, whatever promise you have, whatever dream God has given you, whatever word he has said to you, whatever vision he has showed you, Ultimately, God is going to be the one that fulfills that. Will he use people in, a, in conjunction with that? Of course, but ultimately no one person is going to stop what God wants to do. So he alone is enough. Many people will not always understand, nor will they always agree. People are people. We are not fully, re you know, redeemed in the sense of like our flesh. And so people will disappoint you even 
good-hearted people with good intentions, and that's okay. We have to learn how to be really quick to forgive. I think, and I, and I understand this part, so I say this with compassion, that sometimes it's easy to be quick to get angry, right? Especially if you sometimes on this road, there are times that there can be lots of resistance. And in that state, it can be easy to get frustrated, yeah? But this is just your reminder, slow to anger, quick to forgive. We have to make sure that our needs are being met in God or we won't make it very far. And now with all of that said, I wanna add this. This is not a time to shrink back. This is not a time to dumb down your voice or your passion. This is the encouragement to be exactly who God's called you to be, to go after whatever it is the Lord is showing you to do. But while you're doing that, just keep your heart pure. Be extra vigilant to keep your heart pure. Remember who you're doing this for. You're doing it for him. And so therefore, he's worth all the risk. Yeah? The so-called risk. Because in all reality, here's the truth. It may be risky for our experience, our temporary experience here on earth in this lifetime. But the real risk is in eternity. It's actually riskier not to do what you think God has said here. Because in eternity, we will be accountable for that. Did we do what God said to do? Did we believe? Did we actually walk by faith? So ignore the critics, ignore the voices of unbelief, and stay the course. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ, keep your heart pure, and continue to take territory for the glory of God, for the glory of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay, well, I hope that this blessed some of you, and I'll see you on the next one.